Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Clay from Cello.Online and this live stream is all for you parents. I mean, anybody uh, out there watching, of course, uh, Q&A here, ask a question, please ask a question. I'd love to answer it, love to help out. Uh, but we're going to focus on uh, the title here, which is parents talking to students about cello, especially when the parent is not a musician. I get this question all the time. I'm not a musician. Uh, I, I don't play an instrument, but you know, my child loves it. I want them to, you know, I want them to participate in it, to, to play the cello. And what can I do to encourage them to, you know, interact with them when it comes to music and playing the cello? And some parents feel a little lost. Uh, they feel, you know, like they can't say anything because they don't play an instrument or they think that the child should just sort of do that uh, on their own. Um, you know, there's all sorts of reasons why parents decide to, and it's okay, you know, it's, it's totally normal. And f right off the bat, first thing, parents, let me just give you permission um, for those of you that feel a little anxious or trepidatious about talking about music, about talking about cello with your student because you haven't played a musical instrument. That's just, you know, that's just our own self-doubt as parents. We all go through it. Um, you know, like, you know, in our own household, for example, you know, my son's playing the violin and my wife is, you know, an incredible violinist. And so, you know, sometimes I, it's so easy just to default to her or not say anything to our son or, you know, but I have to remind myself that, you know, I, you know, I do actually, you know, even though cello is my main instrument, when we're practicing the violin, there is a lot that I can share with him and a lot that I can and say. So, and there are many, many things, uh, we're going to go over some of them here, that you can do with your student. So let's jump right in. We're going to start with the easy stuff, which is the stuff that requires absolutely no musical knowledge. You have to remember that, you know, they're children, all right? They are not fully formed adults. Even if they're in high school, you know, it's like we, we look at high school students and we do want them to be more independent. We do want them to be, um, you know, making more decisions um, as they, you know, grow into maturity because they're going to have to do that fairly soon for themselves in college. Um, but they still need lots of reminders. And the younger they are, the more reminders they need. This is a challenging pursuit, playing a musical instrument. It's hard to remember everything to do, or they don't have the self-discipline yet to do these kinds of things on their own. And so, you know, as parents, we want them to be independent. We're gonna get into that a little bit later, looking at my notes here. But before I get ahead of myself, the easy stuff, okay. Number one, the metronome, okay. More often than not, you probably should hear it going. I mean, even, you know, especially with a stringed instrument with cello, it doesn't, you know, our, our rhythmical ability, okay, ability to keep time isn't the only thing factored in, okay. When it comes to the metronome, it's going to help our bow use. It's going to help our shifting over here, okay, which is ultimately going to help our intonation, okay. I know most people don't think of the metronome helping with intonation, but on some level it does because getting the fingers moving rhythmically, getting that timing down, you know, it just makes your practice more efficient. You're going to learn things faster. So, you know, if you don't hear it going at least every so often, that's something to ask your student. You know, did your teacher ask you to play with the metronome? Are you supposed to be using the metronome a little bit more often? You know, and just checking in on that. I mean, you can hear the click going during the practice session. So check in with them and ask them. Um, and I'll be sure and link my favorite favorite one down there in the in the description. Okay, because students just forget. They'll just not get it out, or maybe it's on their phone, and they go to get the metronome out, and they go to something else on the phone and get distracted. That's why I'm such a fan of a dedicated device. Anyway. Um, Number two, and be sure if you have questions, even if you're watching this on the replay, I'm watching the comments over here, uh, 
leave me a question. If you have questions about any of this that I've mentioned or I'm talking about, uh, yeah, just put it in there, even if it's not live, and I will uh, answer that for you. Okay. Take a little sip of coffee here. Ah. All right. Number two, recording themselves. Okay. You know, most students, and we're going to talk about this, this is going to be kind of a recurring theme, I think, is that students, when they sit down to play, they just want to play through stuff. I mean, that's the most quote unquote fun, right? Is to just play beginning to end and stopping to, you know, put the phone where you can see yourself. Um, but, you know, it, you barely need to see yourself in the recording because the, the audio is the most important, right? But it's just taking that time to stop and just appreciating how important it is to stop and record yourself, play through whatever it is that you're working on, and then listen back to it. And, you know, as the parent, you have to remind them <laughs> to do that. You have to remind them how important it is. And again, just like the metronome, telling them to record themselves and listen back to it requires no musical knowledge. You know, you can be a part of this. You could help them, maybe, by getting, you know, holding the, cap, you know, holding the phone for them. Um, and I suggest using a phone, you know, use a phone, use a tablet. These things are made for recordings. Laptops, Chromebooks, things like that are not great. Um, phones are just, you know, one of their design features is to make great video. So use a phone. Okay. Uh, number three, self-reflection and stopping to assess, not just playing through. I told you the, the playing through would be a theme. And again, the younger the student, the more challenging this is going to be and the more the parent needs to step in and just prompt the student. Well, what did your teacher say about that? Or how did your teacher tell you to practice that? Or was there something specific you're supposed to focus on in this particular passage, in this particular piece? You know, jog their memories. Have them tell you about the piece. I'm going to give you a suggestion along with that here at the end. But what can they say about the piece? And what can they say about their own playing? You know, the more you can stop, like with pitch, for example, with intonation, we always talk about the importance of stopping and saying whether it's sharp or flat. If you just say it's bad, that's not enough. Okay, You have to say what it is that's wrong with it so that you can then correct it. Okay, So it's kind of this multi-step process. And stopping and going through those steps requires maturity. It doesn't really require any musical talent. All right, You just have to stop and say, okay, did I do step one? Did I do step two? Did I do step three? So the first step is just to stop. The second step is to make a decision. Okay. And then the next step is to do something with that decision. Like if it was flat this time, am I going to play it higher next time? And making sure that that happens going one, two, three. And students, even, you know, some college students, um, and especially high school down to elementary, really struggle with this. But you as the parent, can remind okay students just how important this is and you can help them go through those steps if you're not sure what steps to go through when you're practicing a particular piece or um, you know looking focusing on a particular section um, talk to your teacher you know find out what the steps are for for whatever task is at hand so you can help your student go through them Okay, number four here on my list today. Focusing on a small section, not playing through. Well, this, really, this really is a theme. Um, it's always on my mind. Uh, focusing on one measure, focusing on two measures, or just a phrase, you know, and repeating it. Focusing on one aspect of that measure, like just the intonation in this measure, just the rhythm in this measure, just my bow hold in this line, that kind of micro practicing um, is what's going to help them improve. But also, actually, that kind of practicing makes it more fun, makes it more enjoyable in the long run. I think it's hard to see maturity wise that this is actually going to make 
the playing and the, the going through this process more interesting. We assume that just playing through stuff and playing a piece, because that's what we want to do, we want to play the cello, right? That if we just sit down and just play through stuff, that's going to be the most interesting and the most fun. And actually in the practice room though, digging in and making all these connections, um, I won't go off on a tangent about comparing video games to practicing, but I do love to do that because I think there's a lot we can learn from that, but that's another video, right? Um, but really getting into this stuff and, and making connections, that's one of the great joys. That's one of the great things, you know, the fun things about practicing. And so help them dig in to these little places um, and get suggestions from your teacher for whatever piece that you're working on. And of course, you can use the channel here, um, different tutorials and things to help dig into to some stuff. But just helping them do that and appreciate it and help your student remind them, you know, to focus in on these small little details. You can do that. You can totally give yourself permission to do that. You don't need any kind of musical experience um, to, to help them, you know, to prompt them and go digging into this stuff. Okay. Number five. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. Um, these are just at the top of my list that I talk to parents often about and I, you know, have videos about on the channel here. But the last one here um, is setting a timer this is just like this is my thing here lately is i'm going to spend this much time on this something it really is everyone's key to freedom you know the excuse me the wonderful thing about cello about any art form is that it can always be better you know you can always do more with it there's always something to improve. And so if you don't say ahead of time, I'm going to spend this much time on this, you know, it, you're going to waste a lot of time. Uh, and also, you know, just to focus our practice to ensure that we're going to stay focused on something long enough to solve it is the other thing. Because, you know, again, when you're very, very young, and when I say young, I mean like high school on down, you spend it's hard to imagine that you've actually only spent like 15 or 30 seconds on something but usually that's the case you know because what happens is we start bouncing around oh i'm going to think about this or i'm going to think about this and we go on this crazy spin cycle where we're just kind of bouncing around thinking about everything you know for like five or ten seconds literally and what you've got to do is you got to set a timer for one minute two minutes that's actually a really long time and you start doing this more and you realize five minutes is a very long time to spend on something. But when I say very long time, we're talking about, I'm going to think about my thumb not pressing. I'm going to play this, you know, excerpt or whatever. I'm going to think about my thumb not pressing for five minutes. It's, it's incredible how much progress you make. Or I'm going to think about my bow hold for just five minutes while I practice it. And I'm talking really focus in on it. Um, use that timer, help them pick a goal and the progress to just be through the roof, okay? So all these things, you know, metronome, record themselves, helping to stop and analyze, just that self-reflection piece, just remembering to do it, focusing on a small section, not playing through the piece, setting a timer to focus on something small. All these things you can do without any musical ability. And so I hope that they help. Now, uh, next here. If you have any questions, again, put it in the comments down there. Be happy to answer those. Okay, now, the professional <laughs> reminder. You know, and I started to mention this earlier, and I'm going to elaborate now, is... We have to remind our children, I have two of them, I have two boys, and we have to remind our children about so many things throughout the week. And I know we feel like, we start to feel like we are their personal, you know, Siri, Rolodex, whatever analogy works for you. And then it comes to cello, and this is supposed to be the quote unquote fun thing, the relaxing thing, the release, right? And we decide that we're not gonna remind them about this 
And this is the one thing in their life that they need the most reminders about because there's so much to keep up with. It's very rewarding. I don't want to make you like afraid, like, oh, let's quit the cello today. There's just too much to keep up with. It's, it's, it's simple reminders. There's a lot of them, but they're all pretty simple, you know, as I just kind of explained. But this is not the time to, to, to let up. You know, we want, our, we want our children to be independent. We want to teach them to be independent thinkers. And there's a place to do that within the music, within practicing, within, within the discipline. But we as parents absolutely cannot check out on this one and just leave them to it. You know, it's not like, I, I love to compare video games, but it's not like video games in that way where we just let them go do it or we just let them go do like other fun tasks with their friends we got to be there helping. we got to be there reminding them, making sure they're staying on task um, because it's so challenging, okay? Because it's so challenging just to, to all the stuff, right? So don't be afraid to be, you know, the reminder. And also remind yourself that, you know, even if it's been a long day or it's been a long week, you got to remind them. you gotta be, <laughs> you got to be on them about this stuff. And that's just the way it is. Okay. Um, I would say though that when we get worried about reminding them, okay, because we put it on ourselves that we're telling them to go do work or we're telling them to go do something that's boring. Well, we've imposed that feeling that we have about it on them. All right. Maybe they don't actually feel that way. And so what I would remind you of is, you know, stay positive. You know, remember that the, the ultimate goal here is to perform and to play and play through pieces and that it is a fun task and that practicing can be fun too. It's challenging, but it's, you know, it's the fun kind of challenge, just like playing sports or some, you know, difficult video game or some other board game or something. If you can you know, make a puzzle out of it, make a game out of it. And that's what we're going to get into next. So as you're reminding them, remember that some of our own self-doubt or some of our own experiences, maybe we had a bad experience with practicing as a child. Maybe we had some bad music teachers. Um, and so when we're going to tell our child to go practice, it's like, oh, you know, I remember how it was for me. And we have a little bit of, of guilt about that. You know, you're here watching this video. You're trying to find out how to do it better, how to make this a better experience for your child. Do not put that negative spin on practicing. Be positive about it and they will be positive about it. Okay. Um, now, what can you do to make it fun here to end our time together? Um, you know, the more, like I said, you can dig into these things, uh, the more you can gamify it. I know that sounds kind of cliche, but actually it, it, it helps. It works. Um, so some things I've done with students, um, get it five times in a row, like play something, really put the pressure on if it's a shift or a difficult passage or a string crossing or something like that. Can you get it five times really correct in a row? Um, and now some of that would have to be on them as you know, going back to that, you know, how much musical experience do you have? Is it, was it correct five times in a row? And they'll know. All right, they'll have fun challenging themselves, and so you can help them do that. You could add some dice to this to change up the number. Um, you know, I have like some like uh, twelve-sided dice uh, that are fun. You can get stuff like that at the practice shop. I'll put a link to their uh, website down uh, in the description. Great place to get stuff like that. Um, what's another one? Play these same few notes. We talked about the timer before. Play these same few notes one or two minutes straight. Can you make a loop and you know decide we're gonna play this little this little something? Can you do it over and over again for one or two minutes? Okay. Um, you know, and you could be there with them to help support them um, as they do that. Uh, here's one that maybe you've not heard before. <clears throat> Excuse me. How many facts can you point out in one minute? Connections in the music like oh, this, this note goes to here, oh, and it goes to here again, or, you know, I use this finger this many times in this passage, or I play this note this many times in this passage, or I play this dynamic, then I play that dynamic, you know, 
how many things in the music can the student describe to you in one minute? Please, please, please get them talking about what they're playing. The more connections they make, <coughs> excuse me, the more connections they make, the more they decide things about the music, um, the faster they're going to learn it, the more they're going to internalize it and absorb the music. And putting the timer on it um, is that kind of pressure game piece that makes it a little bit more interesting, that makes it a little bit more fun than just saying, oh, tell me about the piece. You know, it's like, well, and then whatever. But say, you have a minute to tell me as many as you can. And they start looking and the timer's going. It is a lot of fun uh, to do that. And so just a few tips there uh, to help them practice and make it a little bit more interesting. Okay. Parents, I hope this has been, <coughs> excuse me, so sorry this morning. Um, <coughs> I should have brought some water to this live stream. Uh, forgive me. Uh, please put questions and comments. Remember, this is part one. This is just about, you know, cello, um, you know, general mus musical stuff, general cello stuff, how to practice with your student, things you can do at home, you know, one-on-one -on -one when you're talking to your student. I am going to do another parent-focused live stream later in the week. Um, since I am a school orchestra teacher, talking about what you can do to help support them in orchestra, especially if they're not in lessons. Uh, so make sure you come back and tune in for that, and thanks for watching.